Hi friends, today the topic of our discussion is how a theory is different from law. First of all, starting with definition. A scientific theory is the best possible explanation of observation that is based on large body of scientific evidence that have been scientifically tested in many ways and that can be scientifically tested also. For better understanding, let us take some examples. Cell theory, all organisms are made up of cells. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. Dalton's atomic theory, Institute's theory of relativity. So these are all theories. And what about law? A law is often a universally accepted statement or a fact that can make true reliable predictions. Some examples include Newton's law of motion, RDV in law in the case of population genetics, Mendelian's law of inheritance, Boyle's law, X Charles law, etc. Difference number two, what it explains. A theory explains how nature works. It is an explanation of a phenomenon. Theory answers the questions like why, how, what, when, etc. Take the example of theory of evolution. It actually explains how life originated on this planet and what is the reason and how it originated. Darwin proposed natural selection. So it answers certain questions like how, why, when, etc. Whereas in the case of law, law explains what nature is doing under a certain set of conditions. It's a generalized statement about a phenomenon. Let's take an example to understand the concept. This is Charles' law. For a fixed mass of ideal gas at constant pressure, the volume is directly proportional to Kelvin temperature. Simply, at constant pressure, the volume increases as the temperature increases. This diagram explains the law. So here, this happens this condition. If the condition is satisfied, the condition is a fixed mass of ideal gas at constant pressure, this will happen. Volume increases at on increase of temperature. Volume increases on increase of temperature. This will happen every time if the condition is satisfied. Therefore, law explains what nature is doing under certain set of conditions. Now moving into difference number three. Theory is often descriptive and very complex compared to law with detailed explanations and supported by many hypotheses. Now let's take the example Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. So at 50 years old in 1859 he published the theory of evolution in a massive 490 page book entitled On the Origin of Species that explains all his journey through different continents in a German Spiegel and the species collected, specimen collected like that, everything and went to 6th edition by 1872. He further wrote 15 additional scientific books on the basis of the same book on the origin of species with additional ex examples. Our theory is very descriptive with massive amount of data. Whereas in the case of law, it is often a very short summary or concise, precise summary of large number of facts. Can be expressed even as a statement or an equation. In the case of Charles' law, for a fixed mass of ideal gas at constant pressure, the volume is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. It can be expressed as V is directly proportional to T at constant pressure. So this is another equation V1 by T1 is equal to V2 by T2. Law is often a simple statement or often an equation, a short summary of large number of facts. Theory is often descriptive whereas law is very precise and short. Difference number four. Theories are subjected to revision and may be replaced or even rejected based on new findings. There are many exceptions for a theory. Let's take some examples. First of all, starting with Darwinism, Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. At the time of Darwin, Darwin actually don't know about the role of a gene in inheritance. So by adding the knowledge of modern genetics, now it is neo-Darwinism. So Darwinism plus all the data associated with modern genetics, theory of evolution is revised as neo-Darwinism. So it's revised. And theory of spontaneous generation, this was an explanation, this was a theory believed till 18th century regarding the origin of life. Life originated spontaneously from water, from dead leaves, from muddy pools like that. This was disproved by Francis Coretti's experiment, Louis Pasteur's experiment, etc. So this theory was rejected by new findings. According to cell theory, all organisms are made up of cells. Let's take the example of virus. Virus cannot be considered as an organism. It is a subcellular particle 
and it is actually showing some characteristics of life. So cell theory actually cannot include virus. So there are many exceptions like virus, viroids, infectious protein materials like prions, etc. So theory can have exceptions. It may not be universal. Now regarding law. Generally a law is a universally observable solid statement, solid fact which may not be, which are not often subjected to revision or replacement. There may be some addition but the law remains the same. Let's take Newton's law of gravity. So whatever be the condition, whatever be the country, whatever be the situation, there is force of gravity. Everything falls on the ground due to the force of gravity and force of gravity can be calculated by Newton's equation. It is same everywhere on the planet. Difference number five, the credibility or authenticity of a theory that depends on the amount of evidences that supports the theory. Let's take Darwin's theory of evolution. It is supported by massive evidence. Fossil studies, then anatomy of different organisms actually citing the similarities and differences sometimes supporting a theory of evolution. Then embryological studies, embryological studies of different organisms show similarity. Then geographical distribution in different continents and also genetic studies. In the case of theory, it should be supported with massive evidence for its authenticity. But still there may be some missing links, there may be some loopholes, there may be something that cannot be, that are yet to be scientifically proved. But theory for the time, it is the best possible explanation as far as science is concerned. Whereas in the case of law, it is an established universal fact. No further evidence is actually required to make it more authentic. Take the example of Newton's law of gravity. Whatever happens, whatever is the case, law of gravity remains the same and there is no need of adding any data or anything to make it more authentic. It is the same throughout and it is an universal fact. So it will be always true. So I hope things are clear, the differences between theory and law. Thank you so much for your support. You are with MajorDifferences.com in association with BiologicSumsForYou.com.